powers corrupts everything, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. That's uh, something that I learned some time ago, and I th believe that today we see that spreading in, in, in our living planet. Venezuela, right now, during the last 14 years, now it's going to be 15, smartly, with, they, they, they think a lot, and they made this nice new thing that I call neo-totalitarianism. Neo-totalitarianism is, is not a dictatorship in a straight sense. I mean, there, you don't see military every day on the street. There are people can live at their homes freely. There is no martial law. There is some medias that are free. Most of them are closed during the years. And we have that, like you can have in any of your countries, by the erosion of democracy. Too many medias talking bad about politicians. I mean, you don't see the good things, you just see the bad things. Too much foundations trying to rebuild the country, rebuild the nation, without figuring out the consequences of throwing all away and what is going to happen when we don't have any institution left. Right now in Venezuela, we have censorship in different ways. If you have a newspaper and a journal newspaper spread ideas that they don't like, they don't give you dollars to buy your, your, your paper or your ink or whatever. If you don't, don't pay taxes a little, they put the number very big to close your media and so on. They pressure the owners to discharge you, to fire you. They prosecute you, they put bombs, and they can put you in jail too with no fair trial, no good reason. Also, we have the bigger rate of assassinations, homicides, that any other country on the planet have, and you, I'm very sure, you don't even know. We have 188,000 people got killed since 99, and that's the official number, so maybe we have around 250,000. 99% of those killings are, the people are free. There is no trial, no investigation, no way to put them outside the streets. And then we also have over 1,500% increase on the inflation. We, this year, we have 49%. It's a lot. We have three times devaluated our money, our currency, this year. And also, we lose around maybe 1.7 million jobs. If you make that number, it's, it's more than Vietnam, Korea, Iraq and Afghanistan together, and there is no war in Venezuela, like a real war. Then we have violation of human rights, you name it. I put a list there, but between those, fair trial, we have uh, people in jail for political reasons. Then we have, according to the official numbers, around to three to six million is for you, some of you, maybe it's not a large number, but for a country of 27, 30 million people, 6 million fleeing from the country is like a lot of people. And we are not used to that. We like our country, we like to be there, and we're supposed to be happy there. People fly, they flee for security reasons, for prosecution, kidnapping, and, and all other reasons. Right now, we have also a legitimacy problem. The actual so-called president, he won on unfair on legal elections. There was people who were dead voting more than 120,000. What about that? The difference was 214,000. We have people who vote several times with the same ID. We have voting, uh, like people who would help to vote because they were blind. No, they were punished if they don't vote for the right people. We have videos of that. But they also changed the electoral rules in a way that you cannot audit that. You're supposed to audit the machine. Now we see this model spreading all over. You can say that Russia is a, good, a great democracy, or Ukraine. You can believe that all these countries that are going in the Arab Spring, they are gonna became like, so what we call democracies. I don't think so. Some of them are changing the rules of the game, the constitutions, the, the configuration of the entire government. So you see the institutions there, like, you know, the prosecutor, the general federal prosecutor, and, and then you see the Supreme Court name in the building. But 
those are empty buildings. The people who are there are just following the lead of one person that today we can all call dictator, but is neo-totalitarianism. Neo is new, and totalitarianism means one little group that controls almost everything. So they have centralized power. They have these facades of government there, and it's like a Halloween democracy. You know, you know there is someone alive there that is not a zombie, but it looks like a zombie. <laughs> you can be scared in Halloween too. This is not a joke. So maybe you think that this cannot happen to you. You know, Americans tend to say that nothing is going to happen here because the system works, blah, blah, blah. I don't think so, you guys. <laughs> I think people can get big time one day. And they will open a space for a third party here. Hopefully, he will be a nice guy doing the right thing. You know, the right thing. Maybe it's other people, like a charismatic guy, you know, that have runs a talk show, very extremist. He will take over your country, guys. <laughs> and you say, no, this is the Constitution. We say that, too. Like, our constitution, don't approve this, don't let them do that. But when political facts come around, legalities drop. They fall apart. Because when people rise, very, very with anger, with rage, against race, against religion. Look at the other countries. Maybe you don't have this religion thing. <laughs> but I remember other things you have recently. So all those bad things that we human have are there. Good things too. So we need to be aware how our leaders are empowering the good or the bad. Okay, they promise they're going to fix everything. They're going to fix the system because it's broke. Sounds familiar to you? At the end of the day, what they make all the rules, all the system, all the institutions work for their convenience. That's what they do. They run elections very often because they need the other countries to, you know, see, like there is some way to get them out. But, oops, they have electronic vote, they control the electoral system, the electoral system, and you cannot out the system. So they let you play the game a little. You still have to play the game, by the way, because if you don't participate, it's worse. You need to prove on the street that you are putting people out to vote. And the laughable thing about this is that sometimes people like us, like you, they say, you know, I'm not involved in politics, I don't like politics. Maybe you don't like partisan politics. But saying that you are not involved in politics, hmm, not cool. As all the communists or the dictators prior to them, but now they have Twitter, they have Facebook, you know, they demonize the opposition. So regularly, like me, I supposedly work for the CIA, and I got paid for the empire. The empire don't pay that well. <laughs> and they censorship the press. They increase bureaucracy. Why? Because they need to have a lot of people under their payoff, their they payroll. They need it. They need to have, like, slaves there. There is no loss. Why? Because they need people to be afraid. Meanwhile, you're struggling to go out on the street without getting killed. They rule. What we can do? First of all, we need to be aware that participation in politics is good. If you are not political aware, you give in power to someone else to take decisions from you. Then we need to be brave, walk, talk, do things, be conscious, be informed, follow the situation and spread the word wherever we go. And finally, use whatever skill you have, if you do music, if you write poetry, if you write blogs, if you do video on YouTube, whatever, to use the technology against those regimes. Neo-totalitarianism can be spreading right now. Imagine as the butterfly effect, if like 10, 20, 40 democracies fall apart, it will spread like a cancer, guys. So we need to raise a little, I like that picture. You see, one guy slapping everyone, and one race, nothing happened, but with more people race up, 
and you know demonstrate uh, bravery in front of the oppressor, things change. Then understand our racial values and, and things and believe that democracy is over all that. That's the last frontier. It's something that we cannot lose. Our liberties, our freedom, our civil rights. And stay interconnected because if something happens in one country, it will happen everywhere. Thank you very much. Thank you.